chapter. We're going to reread this one from last week and then go on into it. You know, we talked about, you know, we preach a lot about the love of God, but there's a balance in the Word of God as well. And uh, the Word of God talks a lot about the wrath of God. Probably about half as many scriptures on wrath as there are love. But they're definitely there, and you can't ignore them. It just, just because you ignore something doesn't mean it's going to go away. So we have to talk, even though it's a very, very unpleasant <laughs> subject to speak about, it must be addressed. Praise the Lord. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. Now what we talked about was, it's not going to be mixed with grace, where now are, uh, the, uh, the, the grace of God is mixed with the wrath of God. But it's, it's going to be without mixture. So we're going, to, we're, we're going to see nothing but the wrath of God that's going to be poured out. You know, the, the grace of God has already been shown. And then people that reject the grace of God and the love of God is going to receive the wrath of God. Uh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation. Okay. Now we didn't talk about this last week. We just kind of went on through that. But that indignation means anger aroused at something unjust. You see? So what does that mean? Well, we're justified by what Jesus did at Calvary when we receive that justification, we are made just. You know, we're justified through faith. But if we reject that, you're unjust, you see. So, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, the choice is given, but have everlasting life. Those that do not receive it and do not become justified by faith, then they remain unjust and they're going to stand before the judgment seat of God and because they're not justified and washed in the blood of, of the Lamb, they're going to be looked upon as unjust. And you see, this is going to arouse the anger of God. And it, Okay, let's put it up here. Indignation. Put that back back up. Indignation. Anger aroused at something unjust. Okay, so if our sins are not under the blood, then we are unjust. We had the right, we had the privilege, we had the opportunity, we had the choice to become justified through faith. But we, if, you, if you reject that, then you're going to be unjust. This is going to cause the anger of God and the indignation, you know, poured into the cup of indignation. Let's read that scripture again which is poured out without mixture. Again, without mixture. There is going to be no grace added to it. It's just going to be pure wrath. Pure wrath of God. And it's going to be poured out into the cup of indignation. And He shall be tormented. And this is, this is you know, right now we can, we can drink of God's grace. We can drink of God's mercy. But if you don't, you'll be drinking of the indignation of God. Again, it's nothing pleasant, nothing we really want to hear. We want to kind of shut our ears away from it. Oh, this can't be. Not the God that I know. But He gives every man a choice. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. So this is going to be what's this is going to be the end result. Okay, let's go to uh, Ezekiel. We're going to look at some of this indignation that's going to be poured out. Ezekiel, we're going to look at Ezekiel 38. This is a prophecy. Now we're looking at Ezekiel here, but you can go into Revelation, then you're going to we can find the same thing. Maybe word a little bit different, but it's it's the same thing. So this is this is going to actually we're going to be talking about the battle of Armageddon. 
Armageddon. You know, when, and I, I believe during this period of time that the church is already going to be called up out of here. And uh, those that are going to be left are going to have to go through that. But you say, well, what if you're wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, I still got the Holy Ghost that's going to continue to lead me and guide me, and He's not going to let me down. He will lead me through whatever. If I am still here and you're still here during this period of time, then the Holy Ghost is going to lead us and continue to guide us during this period of time. So let's look at this. And it came to pass at the same time when God shall come up against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God. Now, God, you know, there, there's different, different theologians look at Gog as, you know, being different. Uh, you know, could it be Russia? Could it be China? You know, we, 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 it's not really clear what Gog is. But it's, it's those countries that's going to come up against Israel in the battle of Armageddon. And they shall come against the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. Okay, the indignation and the wrath of God is going to be revealed. Right now, we're looking into the love of God. We're looking into the grace of God. We're looking into eyes of mercy. But we're going to see why we're going to look into fire. His eyes are going to be like eyes of fire. Total, total different now. And you don't, want to, you don't want to stand before God on judgment day unless you're covered by the blood. Because if you're covered by the blood... Then you walked into the grace of God and you walked into the love of God. You walked into the mercies of God. But if you're not, if, you, if you're going to be on the other side, then it's going to be a whole different, a whole different story altogether. You're going to be cast into hell. Where the one's on the left hand side, the one's on the right hand side. So the sheep and the goat, they're going to be separated. Some are going to go into hell, some are going to go into heaven. So what side are you going to be on? <laughs> For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Now, how did let's look at this and we looked at we looked at how God uses elements like fire and water, how the word of God uses elements like fire and water and, and different things. He uses it differently throughout the Word of God. Water, in some senses, in the Word of God is used to represent the Spirit of God and the flow of the Spirit. As the heart panteth after the water birth, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. You see? So water represents... And then what else does water represent? Floods of water, you know, represent troubles. When the enemy comes in like a flood. You see? So it represents that. Okay, same thing with fire. Fire, the Holy Ghost came like what? Clothing tongues of fire. And we'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and what? Fire. You see? So, so, and, but this fire here is totally different. You see? So he fills us with the Holy Ghost and fire. That it, it, and that fire that he's talking about is like a passion that burns within us. When you fill with the Holy Ghost and you fill with the Holy Ghost and fire... You've heard of fire being used as, as passion, you know. Well, that, that's what that Holy Ghost and fire, it's like a passion, you know. What did Jeremiah say? It's like fire, shut up in my bones, you see. It's that, it's that driving passion that is inside of us that we have. So he uses fire in that respect, but it also uses fire here. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, totally different, in the fire of His grace and mercy. Now we're seeing the fire of God's wrath. Have I spoken? Okay, first of all, again, He spoke through the Holy Ghost and fire. Right now He speaks to us through the Spirit and through the fire of the Holy Ghost that burns within us. But then, on that day, it's going to be a total different fire altogether. It's going to be the fire of His wrath. He said, Have I spoken? Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that have upon their and that are upon the face of the earth shall quake, shall shake 
They shall shake at my presence. Okay, it's a different shaking. That's like right now I may shake in his presence because of his love and his grace and his mercy. I may tremble and I may shake at his presence. But there, they're going to be shaken because of the wrath of God that's being poured out. And the mountain shall be thrown down. Now this is God's wrath being poured out. The mountain shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall. And every wall shall fall to the ground. In other words, every wall shall fall to the ground. What does that really mean? There will be no place of refuge. When you look at walls in the Bible, when you look at walls, walls were built for what? Protection. Anytime you see walls that are built in the Word of God, walls were built for protection. The walls of Jericho, they were, they were built to protect the people that were inside of the walls of Jericho. So walls, if you study walls in the Word of God, walls are always meant for protection. There will be no protection during this time. The walls are all going to be torn down. The enemy is going to have access. And he's going to be, he's going to like have a free reign to destroy. And there will be no walls and they're all going to fall down to the ground. Right now we have protection. We can run. We can run into the walls of safety now. And we can find there's a city of refuge that we can run into for protection now. But there will be no protection. They'll fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, said the Lord God. And every man's sword shall be against his brother. You see. Right now, what does God try to what is God trying to do? God's trying to bring peace to people. You see? And and the, the sword is the word of God and the spirit. That he uses. But what does he use that for? It's to get things out of our life that should not be. And to purify us. Now this sword here is, is, is nothing but it's no mixture. It's the cup of indignation with no mixture. It's nothing but the pure wrath of God that is being poured out. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, said the Lord God. And every man's sword shall be turned against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the army and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones. And I, I, what I feel like this is talking about is going to be those that's going to march against Israel during this period of time. It's going to be hailstones. And in one place we're going to find out the hailstones are going to be like a hundred. Some of the hailstones are going to be like a hundred pounds that's going to fall. Five. And, and <clears throat> you might say, oh, brother, out God won't do nothing. Well, you better step into the grace of God now. You see, you have a choice. You can stick your head in a hole and act like, well, this, does, this part doesn't exist in the Bible. Well, if you're going to believe one part, you've got to believe it all. Right now, we're participating in the grace of God. And, and again, even we may see some of the wrath of God poured out, but it's with mixture. Even though God causes things to happen now, in the day that we're living now, still there's grace mixed with it. I don't care what kind of devastation takes place in the world. Grace is always mixed with it. But on this day, there will be no grace that's going to be mixed with it. You see? It's going to be totally the wrath of God. So if we believe the love of God and the grace of God, we've also got to believe the wrath of God. You can't pick and choose and think that God is going to overlook sin and those that are unjust because He gives every man an opportunity to become just and to become justified in the blood of the Lamb and allow the blood of the Lamb to cleanse them from all sin. You see, they won't participate in this. They won't be part of this. 
You see? Why? Because if you participate in the grace of God, then you won't participate in the wrath of God that is poured out without mixture. Without mixture. So fire and brimstone. Here's what he said. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. People refuse to acknowledge Him as God now. But how many know the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. They may not do it now in the dispensation of grace where we're living at now. Pray to God that they will. Pray to God that they will. I remember so clearly when I was out in the Spirit the other day. And I, you know, when I was lost in the presence of God. But during a period of that time, I went into like a spirit of travail. And my spirit inside of me was groaning. I remember groaning for lost souls. The different ones were coming to my mind. And I can remember groaning and praying and travailing in my spirit. For though, Even though there was no utterance coming forth out of my lips or whatever, there was a groaning inside of my heart. And I was groaning and praying for lost souls. You see? Because there's still grace being applied now. But it's going to be too late then when people are calling for rocks and mountains to fall upon them and kill them. You know? Why? Because they're trying to flee from what? The wrath of God. But it's going to be poured out. And he said, thus will I magnify myself. If you don't want to magnify the Lord now, David said, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify Him now. Because He's going to magnify Himself. If we don't magnify Him now, we better get this church. If we don't magnify Him now and lift up His name, His name is going to be lifted up. But it's going to be lifted up in the midst of wrath instead of being lifted up in the midst of grace where we can all freely accept it in the grace dispensation. It's going to be... Believe me, all those nations that reject Him now, one day, every one of them are going to bow their knee. The Bible says the kings, those that are small and great, they're all going to bow their knees and acknowledge that He is God. They may, you know, it makes me sick when I hear some of them say, uh, the universe. They, will, they hate it. They will not want, they do not want to call Him God. Some of these, you know, these celebrities, especially. They'll, talk, they'll call it the universe. Or they'll call it anything else except give Him credit for who, what, what He really is. They don't want to give Him credit. But on that day, they're not going to be calling it the universe. They're going to bow down and they're going to call Him Lord. But the sad thing about it, it's going to be too late then. But they are still going to magnify His name. God's going to get His glory. And He said, I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know. They shall know. They didn't know before. You know what that means? They shall know. Why is it saying they shall know? Because they didn't know and recognize Him before. But they shall know now. But it's going to be too late. You see that because they're only doing it in the wrath of God. Okay. Is that it on that? <laughs> okay. Now let's go to 39. We're going to go right to the next chapter. Therefore thou son of man prophesy against God. We only want to prophesy good things. Preacher come prophesy. Only prophesy good things. Don't prophesy any bad things. You know, I see them line up from one end of the church to the other th because the preacher was always telling them good things. But that's not always the way God operates. You see, God tells the truth. If you really want to, if you really, you know, I, I tell you this story about when, when Brother Wayne and I, when we first started preaching, we really, we really sincere. We want revivals. And they, and they say the way you get revival, you call people out and tell them things. You know, that's what you do. You call people out and you... That's the way you're going to get revival. So, okay, we want revival, so we're going to... But the problem is, you know, whatever God showed us at that period, that's what we said. We didn't just say the good things. You know, well, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. Get your house in order because you're going to die. Get your house... You know, 
So, so when, when, when God prophesies, there's one man in the Bible, he wants prophets to prophesy. You see? And, and this one man, this one prophet, he, he, he doesn't prophesy anything good, he says. Don't y'all have some other prophets out there that can come and prophesy what I want to hear? Because this man tells me the truth. You see, the Word of God tells us the truth. So he said, therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against God. Don't prophesy on the behalf of God or, or tickle God's ears. Just tell it the way it is. And say, thus said the Lord, Behold, I am against the old God, the chief princes of Meshach and Tubal. And again, we can, you know, there's a lot of different people, preachers believe in you know what 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 exactly all these countries is it china that sleeping giant that's going to rise up and is it is it russia what and i think it's going to be several countries that's going to that's going to come against israel and i will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee and i will cause thee to come up from the north parts so we know it's going to be northern countries we know it's going to be countries of the north we do know that much and i will bring thee up upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field. Why? Because they have rejected you may say, Brother Al, this seems so unfair. They have rejected the grace of God. Now they're going to drink of the cup of indignation. They're going to drink of the wrath of God without mixture. It wasn't because they didn't have a choice. Whosoever will, let him come unto me. They have a choice to come. You see? But if they don't come, we cannot, we cannot ignore it and say, oh, God is love. God's not going to send anybody to hell because God's too loving to send anybody to hell. Well, maybe you haven't read some of these Old Testament scriptures about what happened. You see? Maybe you need to go back and read some of these Old Testament scriptures about what happened before Jesus came on the scene. And right now, it seems like because we're living in the period of grace and we're not seeing a lot of this like that happened in the Old Testament when they were just swallowed up, you know. The enemy was just swallowed up. The ground opened up and the enemy was just swallowed up. We don't see a lot of that now because we're living in this grace dispensation. Don't be at ease in Zion and think just because we're living in the grace dispensation, God's wrath is not going to be poured out. Again, this is nothing that you know people really want to hear. This is nothing that tickles your ears and makes you feel good. But we cannot ignore the fact. You see, if I believe one part, I've got to believe the rest of it. I've got to believe that these scriptures are going to be fulfilled just like for God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son. And you know, I've got to believe that in Isaiah when it prophesied about, it prophesied about Jesus coming and being born and so forth. And so I accept that. I accept that so readily. I accept that. He rose from the dead and He gives me power over all the... I readily accept that. But do we really accept this too? You say you've got to... You've got to eat the whole roll. You can't just pick and choose what you want to eat. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, <clears throat> and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field, to be devoured. This is God speaking here. This is what's going to happen to them. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they shall know, again, they shall know that I am the Lord. Again, take note, they shall. What does that, when, when you hear that word they shall, that means that's in the future tense, right? 
That's not, that's not in the present tense. They don't know Him as God now because they, they reject Him. Jesus said, I came to my own and my own received me not. So they wouldn't accept Him. So these, but they shall know that I am the Lord. You know, do you know everybody one day going to believe that this, is the, this Bible is true? Do you know that everyone is going to believe that this Bible is true? Those that don't believe that it's true right now will know one day that this Bible is true. Because every word is going to come to pass. Those that have not come to pass yet, it's amazing to me how people still don't believe after Scripture, after Scripture, after prophecy, after prophecy has been fulfilled. Has been fulfilled. And yet people don't, do not believe that this is the Word of God. And again, there's a lot of them that they just as well tear some parts out of the Bible because they don't want to preach it. They don't want to talk about it. It's unpleasant. I'm not going to get people to come to my church if I preach things like this. And believe me, think about it, folks. Who really wants to come and hear this? Let's be honest. Who really wants to come and hear this? You know? But it's the truth. And the truth is going to do what? The truth is going to set us free. You can believe a lie. The Bible says the Antichrist is going to be able to persuade people and they are going, and just like false prophets, and we got false prophets in the land today, and they are persuading people. The Bible says you'll believe, they will believe a lie. He'll send strong delusion. They'll believe a lie and they'll be damned. And that's what's going to happen. And this is the part I really want to get at. And I will make my name, I will make my holy name how many knows His name is holy? That name is still holy. There are those that poke fun of it. There are those that use it in cussing. How many people go around every day using God's name in vain? You know what they're doing? They're, they, 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 they making it unholy. They're making God's name. And think about when you were in sin. You know, maybe some of you were cussers and, and you used God's name in vain. And there's people that's constantly using God's name all the time and they're making it unholy. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of the people of Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. Right now, His name is being polluted. It's being made fun of. But there is going to come a time. People can talk about God now. Make fun of God. Put down on God. And walk away unscathed. Nothing happens to them. You say, I right, look what I did. And nothing happened to me. But on, when, when this starts taking place. He said they will. They are allowing. He is allowing his name to be polluted. Now he's not stopping it. But there's going to come a time He's going to stop the pollution of His name. You see? They're polluting His name, but there's going to come a time that that is going to stop. And He said, they, I will not let them pollute My holy name anymore. <clears throat> and the heathen shall know that I... And who shall know? Everybody say the heathen. See, this is not talking about the Christians because we know now. We know now. You see, when it talks about they shall know, they shall know, these are those that have rejected. These are those that have not received. And how many knows if you don't receive Him, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him and believe is more than just a word that you say with your mouth, but you believe it in your heart. You, you confess it with the mouth, the Bible says, and you believe in your heart. And when you truly believe something, I tell you this quite often, but when you truly believe something, it drives you to action. It drives you towards something or it drives you away from something. I believe that hell is real. I'm going to be driven away from hell. I don't want to be anywhere near. I believe that heaven is real. But to get there, to get there, I must be holy. To get there, I must be righteous. 
And not in my own works. But it's not my works of righteousness. But it's through what Jesus did at Calvary. And through the blood that Jesus shed. All the works of righteousness that I do will not get me saved. It's accepting what Jesus did at Calvary. And believing and acting upon that belief. If you know if you really truly have a belief. Some people say, oh, I believe in God. Oh, I believe in God. I believe in the Bible. I believe in... And do they really believe in the Bible? Now, if I read them a scripture like this, you know, if I say, all lie is going to have that part in the lake of fire, you know, the abominable and the murders and the whore murders, all, all, all of them going to burn in the lake of fire. Oh, I believe the Bible. I don't really believe God to do something like that. Well, you don't really believe the Bible then. You see? If you believe the Bible, you've got to believe the whole thing. So, they say they believe. But when you really believe, you know, again, I use, I use examples like, I believe fire burns. So I'm not going to put my hand on fire. You know, because I, I believe that I could get burned. I would get burned. Without a doubt, get burned if I put my hand on fire because I know that fire burns. That's when you really believe something. It's going to cause you to act. It's going to cause you to turn away from something. Uh, it's going to cause you, and it's going to cause you to go towards something. If you really believe this book, then it's going to cause you to turn away from sin and turn toward God. And if you truly, truly believe. If I ask us today, how many of us in this building believe that there is a heaven and that there is a hell? But there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Wouldn't you really want to know? If I said that there's a heaven and a hell, and you know you got in your mind heaven, you got in your mind hell. And I said there is actually a heaven and a hell. Would you not be interested in knowing how do I get to that heaven? And how do I stay away from that hell? I mean, really. If you really believe that there was a hell, and if you really believe that there was a heaven, don't you really want to know how can I get to heaven? And how can I shun hell? You see? But there are people that say they believe, but they're, they're headed straight toward hell. Do they really believe that it's a place that they're going to burn forever and ever and ever throughout eternity? They're going to burn in a lake of fire? Do they really believe that? Well, according to the Word of God, their sin and their iniquity are going to cause them to go to that place. <clears throat> so I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord God, the Holy One, capital letters, the Holy One, they shall know Oh, I want to know Him now. Oh, that I may know Him. I believe it may be Philippians. Oh, that I may know Him. That's what I want to do right now, church. I want to know Him. Behold, it is come. Everybody say, it is come. It, is. it hasn't come yet. At this period of time, this is the prophecy concerning this. Now, during this period, it is come. That day, that dreadful day of the Lord. You see? Now, I'm going to tell you, for us as Christians, when, when Jesus breaks into the clouds of glory, it's not going to be a dreadful day for us. It's not going to be, a, it's not going to be a, a dreadful day. But when the day of the Lord comes for us, it's going to be a glorious day. But to those that miss it, to those that are left down here, two are going to be in the bed, one going to be taken, and the other one going to be left. Two are going to be working out in the field. Let's say two are going to be out in that crawfish. One going to be taken and one going to be left. You see? To the one that's going to be taken, it's going to be a glorious day forever glory. To the one that's going to be left, now, after the church is gone, they're going to drink the wrath of God without mixture. Without mixture. Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord. 
This is the day whereof I have spoken. Now, it doesn't mean that it's done as of now, but this is a prophecy that says after these things have taken place, then it is done. Mm -hmm. It is done. All, all that has been spoken of is done. Okay, we're going to stop here. We got some other scriptures that we're going to go into. Into um, you know, there's some in, in Revelations. We talked about his eyes were as a flame of fire. See, right now when I look at God, I, I don't really look at God through eyes of flaming fire. I look at eyes of grace and mercy. But on that day, on that day when the wrath of God is going to be poured out. Wouldn't you prefer to look at Him and have Him look at you with eyes of mercy and grace? Because and, and how does He do that? He does that if you're washed in the blood. Because when He sees you, He's going to see you through the blood. And if you're washed in the blood, that means you've accepted the grace of God. That means you've been washed in the blood of Jesus and you've accepted the grace of God and He's going to see you through eyes of grace and mercy. You see? But if you reject that, then he's going to see you through yeah. eyes. Just like he's going to see some as sheep, he's going to see some as goats. Depends on what he's looking at. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be looking at some other scriptures. Are there any prayer requests?